The next listener phone call. Hi, this is Kenneth Ang calling from California, listening on Genesis Communications Network. I'm also the author of the novel Spell Nights. I would like to ask about the existence of the abstract in real life. For example, is it possible to make what I call a snow sword, which is a blade that is infinitely cold that automatically freezes any enemy it touches, similar to how a lightsaber is infinitely hot? Or is it possible to have colored snowfall like rainbow-colored snow or green snow falling from the sky during certain types of weather conditions? Or is there such thing as cold fire? Uh, another issue I'd like to bring up um, is, is it possible to make a robot out of diamond using liquid diamond at room temperature in order to make the joints unbreakable and flexible? In other words, what if the Terminator were made of diamond instead of metal and its joints were held together by room temperature liquid um, diamond, you know, like room temperature, um, you know, fluid diamond um, in order to prevent it, any damage from blunt force trauma? Wouldn't this make the Terminator invincible if he's death rendered a crystal and not steel? Thank you for your time. Well, the answer is yes. Next question. No, let me try to break it down because you raise a whole bunch of different issues. Uh, first of all, is there such a thing as cold fire or cold light? We know that light has energy, but some people have said, well, is there such a thing as black light or cold fire? In other words, a flashlight that gives off darkness rather than light. Well, we know of no such phenomenon, because what is light to begin with? Light consists of particles called photons, and by studying the properties of these particles called photons, we can create laser beams and flashlights and searchlights and all sorts of different kinds of things. But negative light, that is the light that simply absorbs all energy, we've never seen before. Now, some people have talked about negative energy. Negative energy does exist and some people say, well, maybe that's black light. The problem is negative energy is created by something called the Casimir effect. It is extremely rare, very, very tiny. In the laboratory, we've only been able to make tiny quantities of negative energy. But let's take a short break. And after the break, we'll talk about, well, diamond robots and why are, robot, why are rainbows colored the way they are. You are listening to Science Fantastic with Professor Michio Kaku. Science Fantastic. Welcome back to Science Fantastic with Professor Michio Kaku. It's open mic on Science Fantastic. Here's a chance for you to talk back to the radio. Why should we scientists have all the fun? All the fun of exploring the wonders of Mother Nature and the universe. Why not jump into the game and give us a call at 612 564 8135. All we ask is that you leave your name, call letters to the radio station you're listening to, and the city you're calling from. And perhaps your thoughts will be heard all over the country on national radio. Well, before the break, we had a question about cold fire, about rainbows that are different colored, and diamond robots. So let's try to answer them one at a time. First of all, when you talk about fire and you talk about light, that has energy, positive energy. Therefore, cold fire and black light are not possible. However, there is an extremely rare phenomenon called negative energy, which would, in principle, absorb energy rather than emit energy like a campfire or a searchlight or a laser beam. But negative energy is extremely rare. In fact, it is so rare that if you had enough of it, you could actually use it as fuel for a time machine. That's right, a time machine. That is the basic gasoline that you have to put into a time machine to go back into the past. As outrageous as it sounds, that is compatible with both the quantum theory and Einstein's theory of general relativity. Then the caller asked about rainbows. Why can't rainbows be different colors? Well, first of all, you have to answer the question, of why are rainbows colored the way they are to begin with? Well, in elementary school... The teacher oftentimes takes a prism, which is glass in the shape of a triangle, and then shoots white light through the prism, and bingo, out comes out a rainbow. So white light consists of different colors of the rainbow. Roy G. Biv, 
Red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet. Roy G. Bibb, the colors of the rainbow. Now, what is the rainbow that you see after a thunderstorm? That's because you have droplets of water suspended in the air. Each droplet of water acts like a prism. And when you add up all these tiny mini rainbows, what do you get? A big rainbow. And they are exactly the colors of the rainbow. Now, can you get a rainbow a different color? Well, the answer is yes, but you'd have to do some, well, fancy footwork to do that. You would have to get filters. Filters that filter out the other colors, leaving only the color that you want. So, yes, it is possible to create rainbows of different colors, but it's not practical because you have to get filters that give you exactly the color that you want. And lastly, is it possible to have diamond robots? Well, yes, you can have robots made of all sorts of different kinds of materials, materials that are so strong they could do feats that you only see in Hollywood movies. But the question is, why? Why even bother? Because most robots are not built to terrorize people like in the movie The Terminator. But yes, you can build diamond robots. The bottleneck is not the armor of the robot. The bottleneck is the brains. Our most advanced robot, believe it or not, has the intelligence of a cockroach. A stupid cockroach. A lobotomized stupid cockroach. Our robots that we build in the laboratory are very stupid. You've been brainwashed into thinking that they're super smart and dangerous. That's Hollywood. Those are puppets that you basically see in movies like The Terminator. If you've ever seen the movie, by the way, about the making of The Terminator, you'll see that The Terminator robot was, in fact, a puppet. A very sophisticated one, but nonetheless a puppet. And so you begin to realize that, yes, we can make robots out of all sorts of materials, but the problem is not that. The problem is the brain of the robot. At the present time, they are still very stupid. Okay, let's move on now to the next listener phone call. Uh, Listening on 13. 